Hey guys, I'm back again with another video and I kind of want to share this. This is my newest creation and in this video I'm just going to talk about how I designed it, why I designed it, and kind of give you kind of some behind the scenes understanding of what goes into a project like this. In my next video it will be a build log and also a sound test of this. Now let's kind of talk about this. This is a a clone of a definitive speaker that I fell in love with many, many years ago. It was the CLR 3000. The CLR 3000 was actually, uh, most people considered it a center speaker, but definitive named it. It was a definitive technology speaker and definitive named it CLR 3000 for a reason. CLR stood for center, left, or right. Meaning that this particular speaker could be a center, a left, or a right speaker, or you could use it in your entire front sound stage. Now the CLR 3000 was their biggest model and their biggest model had an eight inch powered subwoofer in it. It was considered a full range speaker and uh, people that fall in love with definitive speakers loved it uh, because it just was amazing. And there's something about being able to get bass from a center speaker that you don't typically get that really, really can be impressive. Um, so I wanted to kind of clone that um, or really say it differently. I, I wanted to build what I consider to be a better version for cheaper, or at least as good a version, if nothing else, for cheaper. And so I went on that, and so I set a budget of $250. Now, CLR 3000, when it was brand new, was $1,000. The reason why I set it for $250 is because I want people to be able to build at least three of these for the cost of one of them. So if someone wanted an actual CLR, they could build all three and have a left, a center, and a right from the price point. Now, I succeeded. Now let's talk about what speakers I chose and why, and um, what kind of the design process, what I had to go through when I had to design this. Um, first thing I had to do is I had to choose the drivers. Now I chose these Dayton 5 inch drivers. Now when I went on Parts Express website, the first thing I had to do is scroll down and see which ones would work well in a small sealed cabinet. I knew that I wanted to seal the front end because I wasn't sure exactly if I was going to port the rear and I didn't want to port both the rear and the front. So I decided, all right, if I choose a small sealed one, what can I do? And so I found these Dayton drivers and in a sealed, a small sealed cabinet, they could get an F3 of 120 hertz. Now I needed something that would be somewhere between 120 and 80 hertz. So these perfectly fit the bill. Now I also chose the reference line for its obvious re reasons. It's a reference series, meaning that it's high quality sound. So I wanted to make sure I got high quality sound out of it. So I chose the reference line. Now I also chose this tweeter. Now this is a peerless tweeter for a couple reasons. There's a couple reasons why I chose this particular tweeter. One, it has a very linear response. And whenever you're building a hi-fi speaker or high fidelity speaker, you want a very flat response. So I chose this one for the build so that it could give me a very flat response. And this one actually has extended range, which means it can go almost all the way to 40,000 hertz, which is beyond human hearing. So we know that sonically, even for people that hear past 20,000 hertz, this is going to be able to produce it. So I wanted to make sure that we had those things set. So. We wanted to make sure we had a very linear response and high fidelity speakers, and we did it. And we got it to fit in a very small cabinet. And I'll explain the cabinet in a minute. But before we do that, let's talk about the subwoofer that we chose. We chose the GRS 10 SW4. Now, the reason why we chose the GRS 10 SW4 is a couple reasons. One, it's a very good value. It's an unbelievably priced subwoofer. It fit within the price range that we were going for and it fits in a very small box as well. They only need about one cubic foot in a sealed box. Now I chose sealed for this for a reason, because I do envision people using these as an LCR um, or using this maybe with multiple subwoofers. Um, you know, if you use an LCR, you'd obviously have three of subwoofers, one in the left, one in the right, one in the center. And I felt like room gain would be more important than the few hertz that you got when you actually ported this. This this actually porting only gives you about three or four more hertz in this size box. So it just really wasn't worth it. So we, we chose a sealed box. Now the only other part that, to this besides the crossover, which we're going to talk about next, 
is the actual amplifier. Now this amplifier only powers the subwoofer, but we chose this Dayton 100 watt amplifier for a couple reasons. One, it's a perfect size for the subwoofer. The subwoofer can handle 100 watts, we're gonna give it 100 watts. But the other thing is, it is it actually has full range inputs. So if you want to run this speaker as a full range speaker, instead of a, a subwoofer separate from the speaker, you can do that with just a couple hookups of wires. Now, I think most people are gonna run this as an LFE, but you have the option of running it as a full range speaker without having to run the LFE as well, which is great. Now, the crossover. The crossover was kind of a pain to um, get right. Now, uh, I used all high-end caps um, and inductors because I wanted to make sure that everything was audio file quality, and so I, I chose high-end caps for that. I started with a second order on the tweeter, but as I turned it up, I felt like I was getting a little distortion on the low end of the tweeter, so I switched it over to a third order, and when I did that, I got a very, very nice response. Um, and honestly, it actually ended up being a much easier design than I thought it was going to be. Now let's talk about the box a little, because the box is very, very important. Now I talked about how these speakers need to be in a very small container, and you might be wondering why, because it looks like a really big box. We chose a 10 inch baffle so that we can cut down on baffle diffraction, um, or stated better, that you're going to be cut back not only on baffle diffraction, but also baffle step loss. So the larger it is, the less loss you have. So we chose a bigger baffle so that we have less loss. And the other thing that we chose is we put a divider all the way down the center. So there's actually only three inches in this middle part where these speakers have to breathe. There's not much room back there. And there's also two braces in here on either side that are bracing this to make sure that the vibrations of this don't affect the sound quality of this. And because we put braces there, guess what? We also put braces back here with the subwoofer for the exact same reason. See, the concern was is that once we built this, if this starts hitting really hard, it's going to actually affect this speaker quality up here. And so you need to do bracing, bracing, bracing so that these waves don't affect this particular part of the speaker. And so we had to do that. And so I designed all that in SketchUp before I even got cutting and building. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the speaker and how I think it sounds. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. There's something about the subwoofer built into a speaker like this that's just, it's amazing. Uh, I, I hooked this up upstairs to the soundbar setup and I was just amazed at how much sound that came out of this. I heard things out of this uh, tweeter in particular that I had never heard out of movies before. And so I was very impressed with that. Uh, someday I will probably do, if you guys want, I can actually do a video of this versus the CLR3000. I actually have one, and we can kind of see the differences in sound quality as well. I haven't actually done that yet, but we could do that if you want to. Uh, but I've been blown away. And there's something about, you know, that sulfur just hitting, bam, right there where the speaker is that just really sounds fantastic. I, I love it. I can only imagine if you put three of these in a room how well it would sound. Even my wife was amazed at this and she doesn't get amazed at speakers typically so the fact that she was amazed by this was really 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 saying something all right guys so the last final thought on this is why would you build this well there's a couple of reasons why you'd want to build this first it's very versatile um, it can either go in this orientation like we have now or you can flip it over on its side and it can go in an mtm type configuration so as far as um, placement options, you have a lot of really awesome placement options. You can put them on stands, you can sit them on the floor, you can do whatever you really want. Put little feet on like I did for a center speaker, but whatever, whatever you choose to do, you have a lot of options with it. All right, the other reason, the other couple reasons why you might want to do this, um, one is called pressurization. Um, bass, when it's in a room, is typically localized. And what I mean by that is if you only have one subwoofer in your room and the subwoofer goes off, you can typically easily point to the subwoofer and say the bass is coming from right there. But when you pressurize a room, instead of hearing the bass, you more feel the bass. And what that means is that the bass is coming all around you and filling up the room with pressure and you're feeling the bass and you can't necessarily localize it because it's all around you. Now that doesn't mean you have to have it up loud, that just means that it's a whole new experience. And people that have pressurized rooms, if you've ever felt that before, you know how amazing that 
feeling is. And so you might want to do it for that. Now last but not least is, of course, space saving. Uh, because you don't have this giant subwoofer box that you have to put somewhere, you now have it built into your speaker, you have a lot of space saved. So you know, people that have limited space or don't want to fill up their space with subwoofers all over their room, this is a great option. I guys, I hope some of you guys build this. I can't wait to get you guys out that build video and sound test, which will be coming out shortly. Uh, but in the meantime, if you would just like the video and share it with your friends, I would really appreciate that. All right, thanks guys and have a great day. Double digit thousand.